judgment in the appeal in the matter of digital satellite warranty cover limited and another against the Financial Services Authority. Lord Sumption will give the judgment to the court. This appeal is about the system for licensing insurers. In summary, that the two appellants carry on business uh, providing extended warranties on satellite dishes, digital boxes, and similar consumer equipment. In return for a periodic payment, they agree to repair or replace their customer's equipment if and when it breaks down. Uh, under the Financial Services and Markets Act 2000, no one can carry on business of making contracts of general insurance without an authorization from the Financial Services Authority. Uh, the appellants had no authorization, and the Financial Services Authority therefore applied to the court to wind them up in the public interest. The appellant's argument was that they didn't need an authorization. They accept, at least for the purposes of this appeal, that the contracts that they made with their customers were contracts of insurance. But they say that with one exception, which doesn't apply, the provisions of the Act uh, which require insurers to be authorized only apply to those who contract to pay out cash on the occurrence of the relevant insured event. The appellants never do pay out cash. They only contract to provide benefits in kind, i.e. replace the equipment that's broken down or repair it. This argument was rejected by both courts below, uh, which accordingly ordered them to be wound up. The Supreme Court unanimously agrees uh, with those decisions. There is no doubt that as a matter of English domestic law, the appellant's contracts are contracts of insurance, whether they provide for the payment of money on the occurrence of the insured event, or, as in this case, for the provision of goods or services. But the appellant's argument uh, is that the contracts which require them to be authorised are listed in a statutory instrument made under the Act, generally known as the Regulated Activities Order. This order was designed to give effect to an EEC directive, the first uh, insurance directive, non-life insurance directive, which was issued in 1973. The directive identifies 18 classes of insurance contract, which, if made by a business, will require it to be authorised. Of these 18 classes, they argue, the first 17 only related to insurance contracts which provided for loss payments in cash. The 18th can be ignored, since everybody agrees that it doesn't apply. For present purposes, the Supreme Court is prepared to assume, without deciding, that the directive only applies where the insurer contracts to pay cash, and therefore not in this case. The Court considers that the directive lays down the minimum categories of insurance business which member states must regulate, and sets out certain standards of regulation which member states must apply to those categories. There is nothing in the directive to prevent member states from regulating additional or wider classes of insurance business which are not covered by the directive if they wish to do so. The first non-life directive was only the first of a number of EEC directives which progressively extended the scope of EU EEC law relating to the regulation of insurers between 1973 and 1992. None of them was intended to be more than a partial scheme of regulation. Although the object of all the successive directives on this subject was to provide a measure of uniformity among national schemes of insurance regulation in the interests of achieving a single European market, it was nevertheless recognized, in the recitals in particular, that there would remain some areas of insurance business whose regulation would not be covered uh, by the European scheme, but only by national law. In those areas of insurance business which were regulated exclusively under national law, some barriers to the carrying on of insurance business across the internal market would persist. Uh, it was enough that the first non-life directive and its successive amendments covered all of the main areas of general insurance business which were likely to affect the interests of consumers. For this reason, even assuming that the relevant classes of insurance business listed in the directive were limited to contracts paying cash, it was nevertheless open to the United Kingdom to regulate insurance business under which the insurer contracted to provide goods or services and not cash. In the view of the court, uh, that is what the United Kingdom did uh, in the regulated activities order. 
It follows that the appellants have not discovered an island of insurance business where they are at liberty to carry on business without meeting the exacting standards of consumer protection that apply to other insurers. They needed an authorization, and not having one, they were liable to be wound up. Their appeal will accordingly be dismissed with costs. <laughs>